yeah, I essentially just uh, DM'd him that I'm graduating in four months and I have like a few things I'm focusing on, but not sure which one to focus on. I was very conflicted. And yeah, uh, it was just kind of like, you know, I wasn't really expecting a response, but two minutes later, he just sent me a reply that I should just send him some notes and he'll give me his thoughts, you know. Then in February, I think, I proposed that I can help him because he just started his newsletter, I think, at the time. And I knew that he was kind of, um, uh, he was in the process of uh, doing a full exit from his previous company, which was Inverse. Yeah. But yeah, at the exact that time, I sent him a message that I can help him out with the newsletter if he needs any help. And um, in, in the next few weeks, we kind of finalized on what the position would be. And yeah, that was in, I would say, early March. So right when I graduated, I was already kind of with Dave. So you're living in Slovenia. You're from Slovenia originally, right? Which I, I don't know much about the country. Somewhat, like it's literally at the end, other end of the world of like the U.S. Uh, but the fact that you've you've kind of like ended up, you're still in Slovenia, right? I, I don't know if this is your bedroom or whatnot. <laughs> it's like you're still like work, yeah, working is... from like your bedroom, working with with these like really interesting, influential people at the other end of the world, and somehow just like, and we're gonna dive into this more uh, later in the interview, but like somehow you've connected with these people just through the internet, right? And uh, I think it's just like a really interesting era we're living in, uh, the fact that that's mm. possible. Yeah, and kind of around that, uh, my, my original thoughts on working in America, uh, it was like a real strong idea I had early on in, in high school. I remember when I kind of, uh, one of my, I think it was my business professor, at high school, uh, he kind of introduced the world of uh, Python to me, of programming. And I was always kind of curious about people like Mark Zuckerberg and Steve Jobs and, you know, all of these uh, personas. And of course, Elon Musk, um, that was in like 2012, 2013. Um, I was kind of following that whole scene, but I never kind of ventured into programming myself. So I wasn't kind of participating on Twitter or something like that. You know, it's not it wasn't that big in Europe at all. Um, it still isn't. And I really, when I discovered programming, I, I got way more into kind of, um, I, I think that's when I got my first, uh, Mac computer, uh, that was like in, uh, in the, you know, a few years ago. And I just kind of discovered this burning want to want to go to San Francisco, um, to work at a FANG, a big FANG job there. Uh, so even before kind of entering computer science university, which I did later, I, I started trying to learn how to program, you know, just like did a million courses online on Udemy, um, didn't finish most of them, but some of them I did. Um, and yeah, I just had this thought that, okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do this kind of pretty concrete roadmap of, uh, finishing computer science uni and then somehow getting myself to. Uh, the U.S. to San Francisco to work at Facebook, to work at Google, something like that. And then COVID came around and I just kind of discovered that, okay, it might be a bit harder to get myself across the pond um, just due to the logistical issues. Um, and that was also, I think, in like Trump was still president, you know, so it was even harder to get a visa as a European. Uh, and... I just kind of settled down to the fact that um, I'm just going to, at least for a while, try working online, try working remote. And that led to me kind of thinking about, okay, who do I want to work with? You know, I didn't want to, I, I understood that it would be difficult just landing a remote job at Facebook or at Google uh, straight out of the gates, you know, as a fresh developer who is not even that good of a developer um, from Europe. So... I thought a bit um, and yeah, decided to to kind of do the cold approach, you know, and I did that over the past two years a couple of times and 
First, it was only within Europe. Um, had a chance to talk to a lot of very interesting startups, uh, mainly in Berlin and in London and in Amsterdam, and kind of tried that a bit for, for the past two years, year and a half, literally since COVID. And uh, yeah, just now recently, I would say the past four four months, um, kind of transition to to the American business scene, I guess. Nice. And so, so you just graduated twenty twenty then. Um, I graduated in March. You graduated uh, mid, March. mid March. So that's what, like four months ago now. I wow, guess. Yeah. yeah. Okay, and then I think it was March seventeenth. Yeah. And then you mentioned startups throughout Europe, um, mm-hmm. like kind of being in talks with them. Why? Yeah. Why did that not? Like, why did you end up not following that path of like working with a startup somewhere in Europe, like helping them grow or like doing like like getting your bearings with like coding and really becoming like a great mm-hmm. programmer? Yeah. So originally, my Kind of, I was looking for an internship uh, that was in, I think, 2019, November. Um, I, I wanted to get an internship at a somewhere. Uh, didn't need to be like a, a tech startup. And back then I was still, that was before COVID. You know, that was like a few months before COVID. And I was still kind of thinking about getting myself to America. And uh, what I did is I I was just think I was... Um, Throughout the whole uni, I read many books, uh, mostly kind of like nonfiction, these business type books and um, yeah, nonfiction. And I kind of zoned in on Near Eel, uh, the author of Hooked. And that was kind of the first person that I tried this cold approach to, I guess you could say. Um, just uh, kind of got in touch with him via LinkedIn um, and we chatted a bit. Um, and I ended up having a call with his, uh, with his kind of, uh, I guess, producer, you could call it, um, Brian Vish. And he kind of introduced me then to, to some other entrepreneurs across uh, the US. But then uh, that's where the whole kind of visa issues uh, stepped in uh, with Trump because I was only looking for like a five month, six month internship. Doing what with him? Um, so that. That was, um, it was always kind of the position was called entrepreneur in residence with programming skills, <laughs> uh, you know, so like a, literally a Swiss army knife, literally. Nice. Mm, what, and you know, what, anything from, yeah. What, what, what is his business? Cause I know he has like, obviously his personal brand right in the book, but like what, like why does he need these entrepreneurs in residence? Uh, how does that serve his business? So I had no clue uh, what kind of work I would be doing. Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, I ended up having a call with his producer. Um, and that was kind of, we were talking about what my skills are, what I could be doing. And yeah, I think I think we that was really like two years ago now. Um, so I don't really remember de- the details, but it was mainly around just, um, you know, if they had some automation that could be done i could take over that um and then of course some research um i i really don't remember the details yeah but uh back then i was really prepared to do anything you know especially for such an interesting kind of uh, person so going back to reaching out to near um mm-hmm. near ayal one thing i like to do on the show i don't know if if you're able to right now is um like going exactly through like your DM of like messaging him on yeah. LinkedIn, if you can pull that up and like read it, or if you want to just like go through it of like what exactly, because like a lot of people are like, <laughs> like how the fuck do you reach out to like this person you've been reading, like who they're, they've been reading their books, you know, like how do you reach out to this person? Yeah. Like just through LinkedIn, right? Like it feels, uh, it feels too yeah. good to be true. So there must like, <laughs> is it just like a simple DM? Is there like a strategy behind it? Like I want to dig into, I wanted to dig into that. Yeah. Um, okay. Let me let me let me try to pull it up. Okay. So to to provide some more context, mm-hmm. at the time I was looking for an internship, as I said, specifically an internship uh, in the U.S. It was like a specific um European grant that would be given out uh, called like the young entrepreneur grant or something like that 
Um, and that's essentially what I was trying to apply through. So yeah, uh, I the way I went around it is I tried to first, I think I probably spent in total maybe four days, three days, um, just like 30 minutes every day trying to somehow get in touch with Nier. And the first thing I did was there are, I don't remember the actual um, the actual pages, but there are some pages where you can essentially get uh, get a few emails of that person. Maybe it's like some public emails, some private emails, but essentially for each prominent founder or like author, you will get maybe like three to five different email domains. Yeah, just like to go um, into specific on that, you basically type in mm-hmm. that person's name plus email. Uh, another way to that do person's it. That person's name, yeah. Another person yeah. do yeah. it is like first name at their company name dot com. There's like yeah. a bunch of ways to, and there's yeah. this tool called Hunter that people can can look into. That's really good. Yeah. Or Rocket Reach. Is I think that one. one that's that rock. Yeah, I think I used actually both of those two. Um, so yeah, but as you said, it's just a quick Google search, um, and I ended up probably with like three different emails that he was using, and I emailed him on all three. Um, I waited probably like two days. Uh, kind of grew. Um, I wanted to have some development with it, <laughs> so then that's when I kind of decided on LinkedIn. Uh, and for the past like few years, um, that was in like let's say 2017, 18, 19. Every year I tried this one year, one month trial of LinkedIn Pro, and in that one month I used the the pro feature of LinkedIn where you get to DM anyone via LinkedIn and no one DMs via LinkedIn. I mean, now they people do. Now now you just have so many recruitment offers and stuff like that. But back then, it wasn't really, I think, as, as filled as, as it is now. Yeah. So, yeah, then I just decided to approach him via LinkedIn. And at the time, I don't know what he's doing now, but at the time he was writing kind of quite um, quite often, he was writing LinkedIn articles. And for in in like one day, I just left, I would say like a comment on maybe a few of those Um, and no one comments on LinkedIn articles, you know, so of course I stood out (laughs) and I was essentially commenting. I I, I couldn't bring up the actual comments, but I have the DM that I sent over afterwards. Um, But essentially the comment was um, on, on one of his articles that he responded to. Uh, the comment was something around like um, I was just kind of expressing interest in what he was writing about, um, and it was like genuine interest. I think he was writing about a specific topic about uh, his new book at the time. Uh, it was Hooked, and then he launched another one. I, I I can't recall the name of the book, and yeah, uh, he responded, and then I responded back in a reply saying that I would be like interested to help him somehow with the growth and like with the with the roadmap of the release of the new book. And um, I think he expressed interest or something. So that's when I uh, delivered the DM right afterwards. And the DM you can see on the screen, right? Yeah. Yeah. Do you want to read through it quickly? Just like uh, a yeah. high level? Yeah. Essentially, I was, um, I explained to him the, what the, what the kind of the grant that, that would be coming to the US with is about, uh, what kind of work that I'm kind of curious about doing, what the compensation would have to look like. Uh, just as far as like what would be taken care of by the European grant and what would have to be taken care of by him or like his team. Um, and yeah, um, I also told him that I have like two weeks to hand in my application. Um, and yeah, I, I essentially just proposed a three month internship with him. I also told him some of my background um, because at the time I was very active in an event management nonprofit uh, that we founded with a few friends and we grew it to like a pretty um pretty good uh, stage. And yeah, I also told him kind of like my academic background. And yeah, like uh, the the day after he just told me to to, uh, email his Brian Bish, which is like his social uh, media producer and like does a lot of things for him. And Brian Bish is also like a prominent uh, social media guy for a lot of these uh, authors. I don't know if you're familiar with him, but um, yeah, we exchanged like a few more messages after this, and we also talked via email um, afterwards. And then I got on a call with Brian Bish a few days later, and we just kind of like went over what the the actual project could be. Um, and then we talk, start talking about the logistics, and then due to the visa issues that didn't come to fruition, 
but then he introduced me to people who then introduced me to more people. And that's also how I got to know so many startups um, across Europe uh, that I was then essentially just having conversation with them about which one to join for like half a year for the internship. Nice. And uh, having, I, I probably had 12 calls with different startups in the span of like three weeks. Um when I was thinking about which uh, which startup to join. And that was so interesting because all of those conversations were kind of so, um, in a way, similar to each other. It was always me talking to the founder, me explaining my background, why I'm kind of interested in their startup. It felt almost like a podcast, you know? Um, and that's when, I, that's when I kind of got also the idea that I could just do that for a podcast because each of the conversations went so great, you know? Um, and yeah, that, that kind of led me to start my own podcast a few months later, which is only in Slovenian, but I think that podcast, um, then enabled me to get all of these skills that a podcaster needs that I was able to do, I guess, a similar thing for Dave Nemitz then kind of, um, kickstart his own podcast, you know, okay. uh, which, which, uh, is part of the things that we're doing now. So kind of like everything led to each other, like uh, so many things kind of acted as dominoes, I guess you could say, you know, which I think life, like that's quite often in life that you don't really realize why some, something happens, but it might just be very useful to you sometime down the road. Yeah, I want to dive into that in a bit. Um, mm -hmm. I th I first, I want to highlight kind of what I think you did well here. Um, one thing that I think is really important if you're like reaching out to someone is like, look at the platform where that person is the most active. So like here it's like seems like it's like he was investing a lot into LinkedIn, right? It seems like he was investing a lot and at the same time it's like not a lot of people like reacting on the platform, right? So it's like it's almost like he has more attention there than his audience does. So it's like a way mm -hmm. higher chance of like uh landing on him, right? Like for me, um for me when I I I spy the opportunity with Tom. It's like, oh, this guy, this guy just like sold at like a billion dollar company. It's like now he's starting this like small startup, and it's like, it's like he he has he like he went from this big thing to the small startup. So it's like less attention on him. So like this is a great opportunity to hop in and kind of like like start the conversation going. You know, um, another thing is is you kind of you 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 weren't like oh like how can I help you know. But you you came and you were like, hey, you pitched this like 90 day internship, like very specific, right? And it was like very easy for him to be like, this kid know what he wants. Another thing is like you had other impressive stuff going on for you, right? That kind of like built up your credibility. And then it's like you made it really easy for him to be like, oh, just talk to my producer and like we'll we'll set something up, you know? It wasn't like he didn't have to think about it. Right. Yeah, that is exactly. And I think um Again, I did not, I do not really plan any of this, you know, I just get into the groove and I just put out some things. Yeah. I don't really kind of think about what I'm actually doing. And uh, when I mentioned that I did kind of this LinkedIn outreach a few years in a row for that one month in a year, mm -hmm. you know, um, the, the first year of my programming uni that I also mentioned earlier, I did this with prominent uh, tech founders from my city. Uh, because I wanted to get some form of a programming internship when I had no programming knowledge whatsoever, you know, very fresh into computer science uni, um, had no knowledge about programming really whatsoever. So I just, I think I reached out to maybe like five of them, uh, really kind of the, the top startups in, in Ljubljana, the capital of Slovenia. And I would say like four of them responded wow. in, a, in the span of a few days, you know, and back then, so I was... That was in 2016, so I would say I was, um, I guess, maybe 18 years old, something like that. Uh -huh. And my outreach then was, I am prepared to do anything um, you need. Everything from Excel to, like, you need some, I don't know, like, um, taking care of your dogs while you're, like, I don't know, you know? I was really just, like, <laughs> trying to get my, my foot in the door. Yeah. Um, I'll take out your trash. And one of, I mean, yeah, I didn't really exactly mention that, but it was like in that sense, you know, like I was really kind of prepared to just 
do anything just to get there and to be in the in the space um, to kind of soak up programming knowledge from there or whatever. I didn't even have a strong concrete plan. But one of them, um, uh, this really prominent founder from, from Ljubljana kind of responded saying that, why don't I just apply for a programming internship? Um, you know, and why am I prepared to do anything if I do have like a certain level of a specialized skill? You know, and that kind of got me thinking that, okay, maybe I don't have to be this, like, kind of hustler. this outreach where it's, yeah, hustler. I was really kind of, I was uh, deep into books like um, 10X um, by, like, Grant Cordon yeah, yeah, back yeah. then, you know, stuff like that. Like, 18-year-old me was very pumped yeah. for um, just, like, get my foot into the door, you know, try to get in touch however I can. Um, and I think that's why my strategy was so different, like two years later, I guess, three years later uh, with Nereal. And then like completely different with Dave as well. Um, I, I guess you could see kind of an evolution in that. I I, knew, I never even thought about it, but I can see it now. Yeah, um, evolution in the outreach skills. But that's, that's super, yeah. it's super, uh, super useful. And I want to get into Dave in a sec. But before that, mm-hmm. um, you mentioned like, after after this near like connecting with this guy, he connected with you with a couple startups and like the, the whole uh, Cairo society. I think you were mentioning. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. What? So did you end up working with some of these startups? Like you were doing a bunch of calls with them. Like I'm guessing to to consider like internships. Um, yeah. Yeah. Did, did you get an internship in the, in the end with one of these startups? Uh, yeah. 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 So. Actually, all of the like the the twelve calls that I mentioned, all of them were kind of uh, very much ready to accept me. You mm-hmm. know, so it was just kind of on my end now to decide on which one I wanted to to actually have the position with. That was the outcome from uh, from that whole near eel thing. I ended up uh, working at Chef's List uh, from March twenty twenty to October twenty twenty. Okay. Uh, and it was it was an incredible experience, and I just went back to Berlin maybe like three weeks ago, uh, for a few weeks, and I I spent a few cool days uh, with the whole team there, and it was just great to relive some of those moments. Nice. And to observe where they are now, you know, uh, I think they grew from. So when I joined in March 2020, they were at, I would say maybe seven eight people. Now they're at like fifteen. You know, so it's it's very interesting to see the progression, uh, where I was very much a part of uh, kind of their early early moments. Did you consider going back like full time? So my 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 kind of situation right after the end of that internship was that I have to push out my thesis. So that's what I focused on for like five months, and I I pushed it out in like February, and I d- did my thesis defense in March, and that's when I graduated, and. That's when I jumped into kind of working with Dave Nemeth. So I I didn't really have any real time to consider what the like if the possibility of me working there full time, if that would be like feasible and what kind of position would that be? Because they're very they're very much still in the kind of scrappy mode, you know, where um, they are trying to raise more money and it's um, they're trying to keep the people they have and it's it's. Um, they don't really have a need for a, um, I think, for a Swiss Army knife right now. Okay. Um, they 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 have a lot of need for sales for these very specific things, you know. So Scaling I don't even company, think yeah. that it would be kind of yeah yeah it wouldn't be um, potentially even feasible right now. So you're there. So, you're kind of there at the sweet spot of where it's like you can really get access yeah. and and kind of learn as much as you can. Um, and it it seems like in between. You start your own podcast, which, which another thing I think, like just looking at your journey, you've done really well. And one thing I really recommend for people that are looking into these positions is like, like start a side, like start a side project. Um, like look at the roles you're interested in doing. You know, like what are the people you're looking up to? Like what do they need? A lot of it is around social media, um, like growing, like producing a show, like a podcast, a YouTube channel. Uh, like start one of those projects for yourself, like get the experience that way. And then you're, you, you will have like, by doing that, you'll have like more skills than like 90% of the people out there. Right. So it's like, can you talk about a little bit about that project of like doing your own podcast and, 
Um, mm-hmm. And then how how you eventually how and why you reached out to to Dave. Uh, I know you reached yeah. out to a couple other people too. So yeah, so the the podcast situation, um, I it was really kind of around. In March 2020, um, probably like maybe two weeks after I came to Berlin mm-hmm. for my internship, that's when COVID hit Europe and all of a sudden bars shut down, clubs shut down, like the social life was dying and a lot of these kind of exchange students uh, who were in Berlin had to go back home. So I kind of felt like I was one of the only ones who remained, you know, and at the time it wasn't really sure what COVID would develop into, you know, it was... Um, could have been much worse for sure, you know? So I was just like thinking, damn, how can I like keep up um, uh, just meeting new people, you know, and like being social and stuff like that. And I I was kind of talking uh, on Instagram a lot with, with just people and kind of like meeting some new people um, and trying to just like get in touch with this interesting people that I somehow knew back from Slovenia uh, through like a friend of a friend who were, I don't know, like a prominent artist, um, our age and stuff like that. But it just kind of like felt very forced talking to them via chat and like asking if like they want to jump on a call. That's not a such a, that's not a thing here in Europe at all, I yeah. would say. Like just jumping on intro calls. Yeah. Um, in, I know. In, Amer- in the US, it seems to be like people are always down to jump on intro calls and it's it seems like to be ingrained in the culture or something like that. But it's it's the complete opposite in Europe, especially when it comes to like more Eastern Europe. It's yeah, not at all, you know? Yeah, I know, man. I, I'm from France originally, so like I, I, I know mm. what you're talking about. Um, US is way more like just like business, you know? <laughs> it's like yeah. it's, it's talk shop, like, let's network, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I don't even like to call it network. I, 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 I like to have these calls. Um, uh, always, I like to have them kind of based on a common interest or um, some value that we can like both give to each other. I don't like just going on intro calls for no reason um, because I feel yeah. like you, you could just do that all the time. But yeah, to to jump back into um, why I started the podcast. Yeah, I, 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 w- I was kind of uncomfortable um, reaching out to people via DMs and like just not just asking them for a call, you know. So that's when I decided to, okay, why not just make a podcast and invite them on the podcast. <laughs> um, and I just ordered, I think it was like Prime Days or something on Amazon in Berlin. And I just ordered a good ass microphone and I sent... One of my uh, good friends from from my from also the capital of Ghana, uh, a girl called Zala. She is extremely well connected, and she's like a great person to talk to. I always enjoyed talking to her about kind of more like high level thoughts and stuff, like zero. Um, what is it called? Zero um, to one. Not zero to one, but um, very good at not talking about small talk when you're talking with her. If you get what I mean. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I just sent her the picture of my mic and she immediately knew that I want to start a podcast. Um, and yeah, she ordered one as well. And I think like a couple of weeks later, we had everything set up and we recorded our first episode and the kind of the, it's the, the podcast is with very interesting people from Slovenia because it's like a tiny country, you know, 2 million people. Mm-hmm. Um, and people our age, maybe there's like 40k. Wow. So it's it's you can imagine that it's not that hard to reach out to people or like to to get access to someone, you know? So yeah. that's kind of what we're trying to do is just have this very interesting Slovenian people on our age, um, who are not um we're not kind of focusing on influencers or something like that. Like we have a few Instagram influencers in Slovenia, but we're more focused on I don't know, we have like a, a 22-year-old guy who's working at Google or something like that. Yeah. Um, and like this specific kind of niche niche people who have a very interesting story and are kind of our age and are from Slovenia. And uh, that's just also another way for me to practice my Slovenian because all of my kind of work life is on in English, of course, you know. So yeah. um, I love to have that as more of my passion Thing. you know it's like my how I um, str- 
stroke my creative ego or something like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I love it. Yeah. Are you still doing it? Are you still doing the pod? Mm. So we we uh, the last thing we did with the pod was we had a collaboration with the local TEDx um, mm. here in the capital of Slovenia, and uh, that kind of it's 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 like a big 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 thing. I think in total we recorded like twenty, no, maybe like thirty conversations uh, with different people from the TEDx kind of team and uh, this year's talkers. Um, and there's just like a lot of stuff to still edit. So we were having a bit of a break from the release schedule right now, just focusing on editing. Gotcha. That's cool, yeah. man. So now yeah. um, you were doing the startup stuff. Uh, you're working in Berlin, then uh, came back to a thesis all this time doing the podcast. The podcast kind of like seems like it sparked you, sparked an interest in media and like producing. Yeah. Um, where did the idea to reach out to Dave come from? The Dave thing then happened. We can uh, we can kind of jump into it and start it off with uh, showing the the first Twitter conversation I had with him. Let's do it. Okay, so um, yeah, I just started it. So that was uh, late September. I was still. This was, I think, my last three weeks at uh, Chef's List. Okay. The internship I was having. This I was still uh, working there, and yeah, I essentially just. Uh, DM'd him that I'm graduating in four months and I have like a few things I'm focusing on but not sure which one to focus on. I was very conflicted. And yeah, uh, it was just kind of like, you know, I wasn't really expecting a response but two minutes later he just sent me a reply that I should just send him some notes and he'll give me his thoughts, you know. What were the four things? Uh, uh, so it wasn't... Uh, I don't think it was four things. I think I, I told him three things. Um, I went into detail here and he also answered in detail. So I was very surprised by that. But essentially it was, one was to focus on a full-time programming job. The second was to focus on my event management business, uh, which was uh, in, I don't, I don't know, at least in Europe in, in late September, it seemed like last year, late September, it seemed like COVID was ending. So uh, we were thinking of kickstarting our events back uh, because right before I left for Berlin, our events were at uh, at their peak. We were we were having just one weekly event and we were getting like thirty or forty percent of the um, foreign students in Ljubljana to our event. Uh, it was like a, a a very cool thing to be able to do. Uh, just like met so many people through that and a lot of kind of. Um, entrepreneurs in the same scene from Ljubljana, um, like this project kind of captured their attention. So we were, I was having like uh, meetings with them because they were interesting in the project, you know? Yeah. Uh, it was a great uh, thing to experience. And yeah, in like late September, it really seemed that that could be a thing that I could focus on, potentially even full time. Um, but then like one month later, the COVID just came back and I'm happy I didn't <laughs> zone in on that. Uh, and yeah, the, th the third thing I think that I uh, that I kind of gave to him that I want his notes on was, I think maybe actually the podcast. Yeah, I was yeah. thinking of, um, I had some ideas on how to really kind of monetize the podcast and make it like into a part-time job. Um, but uh, yeah, so he gave me his thoughts on that. And then we kind of had some more correspondence. Uh, that's also when I just started writing my thesis, by the way. I started my, writing my thesis in October okay. and I wrote it until February. So I was having maybe like just very tiny amount of correspondence with Dave throughout that whole period. Um, and yeah, then in February, I think, I proposed that I can help him because he just started his newsletter, I think, at the time. And I knew that he was kind of, um, uh, he was in the process of uh, doing a full exit from his uh, position at, uh, from his previous company, which was Inverse. Yeah. And yeah, again, I didn't plan this, you know, it just kind of clicked into place. Uh, but yeah, at the exact that time, I sent him a message that I can help him out with the newsletter if he needs any help. And um, in, in the next few weeks, we kind of finalized on what the position would be. 
And yeah, that was in, I would say, early March. So right when I graduated, I was already kind of with Dave. Nice. Uh, working on, 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 the, on, the, on the project. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, another, again, pointing it out, um, Dave, Dave is like a huge entrepreneur, but it seems like, it's like he hasn't really built his audience up yet. So it's like there's not a lot yeah. of eyeballs, even today. Like if you want to reach out to... You can also reach out to <laughs> to, to Najiks, but like even even re, like reaching out to Dave today, I think you probably might get a reply from him. You know, just because um, mm-hmm. let's see how many he has he has five thousand followers on Twitter. You know, it's like yeah. I mean he's like very solid. Like I think he sold Bleacher. Just to give a little context, Dave is Dave Nimetz. If you don't know him, is the founder of Bleacher Report. Um, huge online like sports media brand across social media and uh, just online in general. I think it sold for like $175 million uh, back in 2012. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, Yeah, so huge entrepreneur that's like very accessible online. So like a lot of people, like I think a good strategy is going after the people that are accessible. Like um, if you go, if you try to DM like Elon Musk, like there's so much attention on him. Like, it's like your odds, it's possible. And I think there's ways to get his attention in different ways via Twitter. But I think you, your odds are way better uh, to get like a really high quality entrepreneur that just uh, is not accessible online, like figuring out like which platforms they're personally active on and consume. And, and I think that's exactly what you did. And then just like you, for this one, like starting the relationship early, just like one simple question or like one like adding value in like one simple way, like oh, can I help? You know, um, mm. and but again, it did not start with the DM. I think I was uh, for like a few days. I so originally, I think I he got on my radar uh, because he was mentioned on my first million on on the podcast that Sean Pri and Sampar have with the hustle, and that's when I kind of started following him. And I think, I'm pretty sure I kind of commented on a few of his tweets, uh, again, with like genuine things. It wasn't planned. I wasn't trying to get his attention, you know? Yeah. Um, and yeah, and that's, I think, a few days later, that's when I DM'd him. Um, I don't think you can just DM randomly uh, because you have to somehow get on the radar of the person. Otherwise, you're just a, a weird outreach person who's asking something. You're you just know? like a salesperson, right? <laughs> like you're a, a yeah, salesperson. Yeah, yeah. yeah, you're like a you're like a LinkedIn uh, recruiter. Just like you're trying to recruit yourself. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Yeah, you don't want to be that for sure. Not. So, again, um, why did this make sense for you? Um, like it, coming from like programming background, working in startups, this is kind of like a pretty like a right turn, right, um, or mm-hmm, left turn. Mm-hmm. What? Um, so, what was your rationale behind it and uh, why did it make sense? Yeah, and for your long term goals of like starting mm-hmm. a company. So it kind of my 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 early when I was just when I started thinking about my career, which was in I would say like 2015, uh, 2014, when I was like 16, 17, 18. Um, again, I was like reading this type of motivation stuff, motivational books. Again, I mentioned Grant Cardone earlier, you know, um, and I cannot, I, I am very opposed to those books now. Okay. I don't really, I, I don't find any uh, value in them for myself. I tried, um, but yeah, I kind of had this idea that I wanted to be something connected to entrepreneurship and to be able to have complete ownership or like a very strong amount of ownership over what I'm doing. Um, I think this also may stem from kind of like my family background, where I think for like a few generations now, um, most of the people have been self-employed in my family, just like doing a specific thing, a specific service, service, you know, uh, where they are their own um, business, essentially, their own their own boss. And I, I never even saw myself in a, really in a, in a full-time position. I just... I, I really enjoy, I don't know, when I was a kid, I loved um, seeing my dad be able to take a vacation whenever he wanted, not relying on like the 30 days of vacation that you get at a full-time job and something like that. So it was always since I was a kid in my mind that I wanted something like that. 
something where I had like personal freedom and like complete ownership or like a strong amount of ownership. Yeah. So my, um, I did over my, over my uni time. So like the past five years, I guess I had two long internships two like, let's say eight months long internships, both like full on programming, mostly programming, even the chef's list internship, it ended up being mostly programming just because COVID happened and, you know, it was, it's, it was in the food industry. So all of a sudden, no more clients. We just had to focus on like bringing the tech up, you know, essentially. Uh, so yeah, I spent uh, twice for like eight complete months programming full time. And I kind of discovered that, okay, I could do that. I can see myself getting better at it, but it's very much work that you do alone. It's work that you do unless you're like in a team, but still you're like, solving your tasks, you know, taking them off the checks list. You're very much an employee, a, a, um, it's, it's not as, um, it's, it doesn't feel like you are, it's kind of like ro robotic work, I would say being a okay. full-time programmer. And I'm just like very active. I want to, um, help where I can. I want to do a lot of things at once. And when it comes to programming, you really cannot. You have to focus on one thing and push that out because otherwise you won't get anything done because programming just requires like 100% of focus. It's like deep work. Um, and yeah, it's really deep work and you cannot be on at the different places. You know, you cannot um, have multiple things going on at once uh, and like, okay, I'm going to put in like three hours and just like focus on programming. No, you need to put in six hours, seven hours to even do anything. Yeah. You know? So over that, I kind of learned that, okay, so maybe my focus won't be on programming, at least for now. Uh, let me try some other things, you know? And that was also when I started my podcast and that was something that like, it seemed like I was getting some, uh, some taste of what kind of um, productive work in some other industry feels like. And it was just extremely simple to me. It did not feel like work at all, even though I was like focusing, I don't know, maybe like putting 10 hours or 12 hours a week on the podcast. It didn't feel like work at all. You know, I, it felt like, okay, I'm going to go read a book or something. Yeah. It felt just like creative work. It was fun. And it was fun. It wasn't stressful. Um, it wasn't... I wasn't not looking forward to it, you know, and yeah, that's, that's when I kind of, kind of, um, got this idea that I could do something in that space, uh, for someone else potentially, you know, and that kind of ended up being, uh, Dave and it's, it's not just kind of, um, we don't even have a podcast yet, you know, it's only like a live audio, a live audio thing happening on Twitter spaces every week. Um, so there's not any like post-production, you know, right now, I mean, just like basic mastering, but, um, nothing else. So we've kind of gotten a chance to just try to even push this further, you know, so we have some ideas, uh, that will be kicking off in the next months with, uh, essentially extending this beyond a podcast, you know, beyond a community, more, something more. So there's a lot of, a lot of things on the radar that we are thinking about and it um, the way Dave is kind of giving me so much you could say freedom over the way we get stuff done is it really feels like this is in some sense um, my kind of creative work you know like my creative endeavor which is not programming um, and it's just so it's so much less stressful to focus on it's uh, it's, it's, it's just, it feels like down my alley and I am very interested in just exploring that, you know, to, to see where it goes. Um, and again, Dave is a very cool person. I mean, um, and I think this is like, it's so cool to, um, to see that it's not just a, 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 a corporate entrepreneur or something, you know, it's, it's an actual guy with, with a lot of kind of, um, thoughts on things. And, um, it's very, it's very, I would say, um, humbling and inspiring to think that, okay, like the, the people who fund these incredibly large companies, 
um, they're not really different. You know, it's it's very interesting to discover that because I feel like at least in Europe uh, or like in these small countries like Slovenia, we don't really get to experience that with uh, like maybe we have like three founders who who achieve that level of, of success, yeah, you know, yeah. but they always leave Slovenia and they always kind of um, uh, they don't really connect with with uh, with the people in Slovenia. And hence, I would say the kids, uh, when you're a kid, you don't get any, any exposure to like a celebrity entrepreneur like Elon Musk or something, you know, because there just isn't anyone like that. So yeah, um, I, I would say that that's kind of like very cool to just experience now with uh, with Dave um, and to be able to soak up knowledge. You know, it's it's incredible. It's like reading a book. Uh, it's it's so good. It's even better, I right? Because you you see you see the lessons being implemented. So you you mentioned yeah. you mentioned two things which I want to echo. Um, one you just mentioned is like a really cool thing of like working these behind the scenes jobs with the people you look up to is you end up realizing that these people are no different than you. And like I think there's like a there's like a thing where when you see these people whose material you consume, right? Whether it's a book, a podcast, YouTube, a business, it's like you put them on the pedestal and you're like, there's kind of like this level of like, oh, that's like a different world. You know, it's like I could never do that. But like when you work with these people, you you fit you you figure out that they're just regular people that like had uh, an idea, a dream, and just like executed like consistently on it, right? And so I think there's something about that. It's like it's kind of like breaking. Uh, it's like breaking. It's like the screen, you know, going behind the screen and being like, oh, this is just like this is within reach, you know. And the second thing you mentioned, which is really interesting, is these like the job you're in is like you're running a mini business. Um, you're like, we can talk about this more, but like you're building a team behind Dave, uh, Dave's like personal brand behind his, his podcast. Now, uh, you're going through hiring people for this team, right? Delegating stuff, um, and really building the team and the strategy behind how do you build out this? Cause a personal brand in a sense is like a, a small business as well. Uh, and at the same time you're getting, mentorship from Dave, who's telling you, hey, like, like, uh, who's giving you direct feedback on how you're running that like little business, right? So I feel like it's like a new, it's a new, it's a new type of business. And it's like an opportunity for people who have relatively low experience who are like hustlers, right, that have these like hustler, like generalist skills um, to really learn and get an education in how to start a business. Yeah, I mean, you've hit the nail on the head. I would say it's it's very, it's like a real life crash course on on everything from management to like kind of the thinking about how to form a media type company, but in this very much new age space around like Web 3.0 and stuff like that. Um, and I also get to kind of add my own uh, learnings that I got just from being like, you know, growing up in the digital area era um, and being very much a, a digital native, you know, my whole life is, I mean, most of my life is somehow connected to digital um, spaces. And yeah, like being able to, to kind of at once uh, both learn all of this and to also, you know, of course, get paid for it is just like an incredible opportunity um, it's, it's something that, yeah, I'm just very, I'm very thankful, um, that it kind of came to fruition. Yeah. Yeah, man. That's awesome. The internet is a beautiful thing, man. <laughs> yeah. And I do feel that uh, a lot of these things kind of started due to COVID, you know, I hope that, uh, more people kind of took this chance where, okay, if you want to work with someone like that, or you want to work with a company that really interests you you can, you really can kind of capture their attention via some social media or some, some other way. Um, and they will probably be willing um, for you to work remote just because it's COVID. Yeah. Um, I think it's a great time to get your foot into the door when it comes to things like this. Yeah. And, and more and more entrepreneurs and just influential people in general are realizing the importance of a personal brand, right? And so 
like like you said, like right now is it's it's just like I think more and more you're gonna start hearing of these like jobs popping up of like behind the scenes like producer. Um, yeah, yeah, it's exciting, man. Yeah, um, but I feel that um, just just on that note, I feel that these jobs won't be public uh, public jobs where you will be able to apply to them or something. Uh, I think it, it will mostly be something that you get through uh, either being introduced to that person, you know, through some other means. Yeah. Uh, or like by somehow um, being on their radar, you know, somehow. That that's uh, that's why I'm doing the podcast, man. <laughs> we gotta we yeah, got we gotta exactly. shed light on these jobs and help help people yeah. who are interested in them uh, yeah. like land the positions. Yeah, you, we're like kickstarting a new. It feels like it's like a new industry or like a new type of position that really wasn't a thing. Um, I mean, I think until now, these things were mostly like a founder who wanted to create some sort of a personal brand. Yeah, went out and hired a whole social media team at once, which means that already from the get go, where you don't even know what your personal brand should be, you are paying like thirty k a month just to fuel that social media team um, who just then end up kind of figuring out what you want. But I think it's just so much more freeing to literally just rely on one person, you know, and like brainstorm with him. And of course, the costs end up being much smaller. What, what you're referring like, to is, yeah. what you're like, they used to go out to agencies, right? Is what you're saying. Mm -hmm. Like a social yeah, media, social media team, yeah, so. which are like huge overheads, super expensive, and it's like a lot of times they don't they don't care as much about your personal brand. It's just like what's the minimum we can do to like look good and like it's like yeah. It's less about results, yeah. it's more about like appearance of like, oh like we're like we're doing like some social media stuff here. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, very much. Very yeah. Much so. so um last thing I kinda wanna dig in is like your specifics of your role with uh Dave. Uh, you started helping him with the newsletter. How did that evolve? And how is that mm -hmm. uh, evolving going to the future? Uh, so I won't really go into the details, but kind of the, the, um, the big things uh, that I guess you could kind of call certain tasks are it all started with the newsletter, um, where essentially was trying to repurpose uh, his old newsletters into something that is more Twitter native, you know, so of course, Twitter threads and like trying to come up with some standalones, uh, standalone tweets out of the newsletters. And that then led to kind of figuring out other ways that we could find content for the Twitter threads. Uh, so for example, one of the things we're doing is we have like a one-on-one -on -one with Dave where it's like a, we're leading an internal podcast uh, where it's like a, a private podcast, you know, it's not getting released anywhere. And it's only kind of like um, asking Dave these specific questions about either some operational side from like his time at Inverse or, or Bleacher, or they are kind of his thoughts on media or his thoughts on like entrepreneurship or his thoughts on, um, on, on managing, you know, stuff like that, that is both very interesting to me, yeah. very, um, very useful, incredibly useful to me. And is also very much kind of what is interesting to to uh, his Twitter audience, you know? So we're kind of like repurposing all of that, transcribing everything, and like just trying to come up with uh, ways that we can utilize that, those transcripts, you know? Uh, be that kind of figuring out how to come up with clips from that, from those conversations, or uh, potentially even expanding on them in like video essays. Um, and those are all the things that we're now kind of thinking about when we uh, start our kind of journey into YouTube, you know? Yeah. But um, yeah, right now it's just a lot of kind of just thinking about things, you know, thinking about like strategizing about how exactly do we want that rollout, that YouTube rollout to be, and then what are the the steps that come after that, you know? And um, for for kind of the, the whole Twitter, uh, all of the Twitter content we're doing, uh, all of the repurposing of of uh, of his of Dave's news newsletters that we're doing, uh, we have some people on the team that kind of help us with that, and that's also where kind of where I get to spend some time um, just like 
working with them, you know, um, making sure that everything is delivered as it should be. The, um, the stuff about just like private internal interviews, where you basically just like grill him on his business strategies and experience. It just like for someone who is interested in starting their own company, it's just like it's the perfect role, right? It's like you you basically get like a private mentor who started a like a a company that sold for like 175 million dollars. You get them. You get that. You get to pick their brain for free. You get paid to pick their brain, uh, answering the questions you're curious about to eventually turn into content. But it's just like it's such an incredible opportunity. So, um, yeah, it's cool, man. Yeah, I got I, hyped I, about I, I just feel, I just feel very um, thankful for it. And Dave is just, Dave is also like a very, very comfortable person to work with. Um, I think that just adds on to everything. You yeah. know, it's um, so yeah. It's just like a very great situation. I feel that I've stumbled into. Nice man. Um, final question: What advice do you have for someone who's considering um, these types of positions? Like that, someone that's like listening to the podcast, that's intrigued, interested. Um, what advice do you have for them, uh, just in general? So um, I would say that. Uh, I want to take this answer more in the way of like, what are the things that I see currently with myself that have helped me get this um, and that make me so comfortable in the position? Um, one is just my my very general skill set that I've gotten through like, you know, living on the internet um, in my kind of t- teenage years, playing a lot of games when I was, until I was like maybe 16. Um, that's that was really like my main thing, which just meant that I just learned how to use the computer very well, and I learned how to edit videos, I learned how to edit audio, I learned how to you know do everything. When you like, let's say you 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 are a gamer and you want to kickstart a YouTube channel, okay, mm-hmm. you have to learn all of these things, you know. Um, so I just got all of these kind of, I guess you could say somehow specific skills, and then I just upgraded that with programming when I came to uni, and I think that kind of path just enabled me to realize that, okay, you can literally do probably anything, like investing, whatever. Um, it's not hard to learn. Like you can learn everything. And and generally, like it's, it's very simple to just get into a new industry. And like, especially when you're young, you can really learn so fast and you should never be scared of, like if you think that a certain position, like a certain... Um, a certain opportunity that you see, something you could do, you should never feel like, okay, I, I'm not qualified for that um, or I don't have the skill set. You can always learn. You can always kind of ask someone to help you. People are always willing to help if you're fired up. Uh, so I would say that mainly it's just that, you know, being comfortable with going into these fields where, like, for example, me and Dave, it all start just with the, with kind of like content creation for the newsletter and like helping him with that. But it just, it's so many more things now. And, um, and there was also some like front end work. So like some developer work that he needed for his uh, personal site and stuff. And I was able to do all of it. You know, I never once said that I cannot do something or that I, I don't think I'm the right person to do something, you know? Yeah. Just learn um, it. Learn it on the go. And I think that adds, yeah, yeah. Learn on the go. Um, even when it comes to like programming work that I do, it's, um, it's, it's really, you know, I mentioned the, the kind of, uh, Ben Raw, it's, um, kind of the, what I'm doing for their email, email newsletter. It's, I, I didn't know how to do it. I, I just thought that it would be like a great opportunity and just another thing that I can add to my skill set. you know, so now I can call myself like an, email newsletter, um, custom email newsletter, builder, expert, whatever that is. Um, and yeah, just another thing I learned on the on the job, literally, you know, I, I ended up charging them like way less, um, you know, probably like one third of the amount that I actually worked. Yeah. But in, it was like an investment into myself. I, I learned something new. So I would say like that in general is my answer to the question of what would I advise? Just like be... Be comfortable with doing new things. Um, be resourceful. And not be scared of. Be resourceful and be very curious to just ask someone um, a question, or like you can, 
really go on Udemy and just look up a course and maybe it's like a 20 hour course, but you really only have to like look through and get the most important two hours or like go into YouTube videos, search everything up. Um, everything really is on the internet. Maybe you have to go on Reddit uh, to search it. You know, it's everything is on the internet, really like most, mostly everything. So yeah. just utilize that. That's the truth, man. Um, where can people find you online if they want to follow your journey? So right now I'm really just trying to, um, I mean, I'm not really trying to um, build any of my social media, um, but you can for sure follow me on my Twitter. That's where I'm, um, I really am kind of being quite active, um, especially in the DMs. A lot of things are happening there. Uh, so yeah, you can you can follow me on Hey Nates. I know my name is pretty hard to... Um, I guess pretty hard to know how it's pronounced or like how it's actually written, but it's N E J C and just hey Nates. That's my that's my Twitter handle. And also, if you wanna just like have a chat with me about some specific thing, I'm I'm always available on Discord, um, and Discord is like the place to be. So, and of course, I also wanna shout out Gen Z Mafia um, for really kind of giving me a lot when it comes to connections, I would say, and like being able to talk with people who are doing very cool things and being more resourceful because you can, I re I'm literally having, I would say like two calls a week with people from Gen Z Mafia who are involved with a specific business that I'm interested in or like a specific industry space, uh, maybe something that I'm researching for Dave or something that I'm researching for the project. And I just get to have a, a chat with someone who's like in a specific team of a specific company that's in this space. Um, and that is all done via Gen Z Mafia. Nice. Just like posting a message if anyone wants to chat. It's a and great people do so. Great way for ambitious like young people to connect with other ambitious young people, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's not just connecting; it's just like really learning from each other. Um, so yeah, that's that's something that I want to expose as well. Just uh, try to get in touch with Gen Z Mafia. Try to join it nice. if you have any ambitions in this space. There you have it. I hope you got something out of this interview. I'm really trying to make this as valuable as possible to you. So if you have any feedback on how I can make this better, or if you have any questions for me personally, I'll get back to you. Uh, reach out to me on Instagram. My handle is at Jeremy John Mary. You can also comment if you're watching on YouTube. You can just comment below. All right, thanks for listening and have an epic week.